All right, let's get into a clap it. Hey, yo, Teflon Don. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How you doing? Hopefully, hopefully your day is going well. I got some good news for you guys coming up here in a little bit. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we have some news that's going to be coming to the channel real soon. But uh, that's neither here or there. You're here to hear about the stagnation, inflammation, catastation, uh, trivialization of Elon Musk platform Twitter. And that's what we'll be calling it because calling it X, you gross. But, you know, I was looking for a way to talk about this without making it a political channel. But turns out I didn't have to think of a way of making this not political because Elon Musk, almost a year to date when Ron DeSantis went on Twitter to announce his campaign, has somehow, some way, has somehow, some way found a way to fumble the initiation that is Trump's welcome back party to Twitter. And it's neither here or there. It's not so much what they were saying. If you listen to it, I listened to the first 30 minutes. TLDR, just watch any of his other rallies. He's literally telling the same stories over and over again. And I feel like if you are, if you're someone sitting there saying, hmm, I don't know who I'm going to vote for. The, what he's saying probably isn't going to motivate you to change it for which way. If you do know who you're voting for, uh, furthermore, you don't need to hear what he's going to be able to say and what he's going to do. And while my goal here isn't for me to tell you who to vote for and how to vote, my goal is to tell you to go vote. Because you don't get to complain unless you have some skin in the game. You feel me? Clap that. You feel me? If you don't vote, why are you here? You don't get to talk. Shut that shit up. Do you feel in charge? Do you feel in charge? Because you're not. So let's talk about the technical difficulties. And there's a lot of things coming out. It's still very early. The story is by the time you're watching this, they would have probably confirmed the story. But I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this, that whatever Elon is going to say is the cause of the issue it's probably not. And we have some history to kind of support why what Elon's saying probably isn't the truth. So let's just go over the basics right now before I give you my opinion. Let's see what's going on. What's good in the hood. You feel me? Yeah, let's take it from the top. Elon slash Trump's interview on Twitter started with an immediate tech disaster. Musk claims there was a DDoS attack on Twitter, but The Verge is told there was not. Hmm. Why they got a cap? You ain't got a lot to kick it, man. Elon Musk's conversation with the former president, Donald Trump, got off to a rocky start. That's hardly the case. 45-minute delay. I got in there as soon as the link became available. For I was able to go grocery shopping, cook a pizza, take a shower. I will say the music that they were playing while you were waiting in the waiting room was a banger. Clap it. like It was a banger. Uh, I, I need that on someone's playlist. Great to do work music playing in the background. Great to do work playing in the background. Right? Oh, and it says it here. It was delayed. Like, I thought it was 45 minutes. So it's talking about it was delayed 45. And I was in there 30 minutes prior to. Uh, I got a picture of me in there. I'll snap and you'll see the picture. Yeah, that's me sitting next to Teflon Don and Elon Busk. Uh, but ultimately... It's just, it was just, it was madness. And at the time that we were having these issues, it wasn't like it was a, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was a packed room. At the time, there was only 6,000 people in the room with me. And then I think when I took the photograph, it was like 100,000 people in the room for me. So this is quite similar to what happened with Ron DeSantis. And keep in mind, I didn't even try and view that one i didn't really care about ron DeSantis running but to see that this issue reoccurred almost a year to date says a lot about his inability to run that company and then also and also construct a a foundation where growth and product like they need a product manager and two engineers to solve this issue it's crazy that they had these these technical difficulties those who did manage to get into the space, including the Ver several of the Verge staffers, said it kicked off with low-fi tech playing from Trump's account 
for roughly 30 minutes. So that was from Trump's account? Ain't no shot Donnie got that type of beat on him. We should have never gave y'all motherfuckers 808 beats. Y'all then ran that shit into the ground. 18 minutes after the conversation was supposed to begin, Musk claimed that X was targeted was a target of a mass DDoS attack that had made it po- impossible for the spaces to proceed as planned. The rest of the X Twitter appeared to be working normally. However, this is a great sign. This is a great sign. Could you imagine? Could you imagine saying that you were being attacked by the DDoS and the rest of your apps and all of your other spaces were o- open? I was able to open up two spaces and three people came and said hi to me. They all, they didn't speak uh, English. I don't know how to segregate my fucking shit, but uh, my shit worked perfectly fine. The Verge, that wasn't actually denial of service attack. Another Twitter staffer said there was a 99% chance Elon was lying about the attack. So another, someone on Twitter, a Twitter staffer said Elon's lying about this, right? Elon is lying about this. And one of his own people called a cap. And I think I saw someone in my chat say that. Um, um, I thought I thought someone said in the chat, oh, it was a DDoS. Shut up. You hear me? Shut up. You trust these idiots? This man had can't even he has a company called Boring Company. All they do is dig holes, and that company failed somehow. But from the word, from the word, from the horse of the mouth, there appears to be a massive DDoS attack on the Twitter working on shutting it down. Worst case, we will proceed with a smaller number of live listeners and post the conversation later. How, how long did you have to prepare for this, right? How long did you have to prepare for this that you weren't able to? To, you weren't able to get this this down pat. A, a year. You had a year. In a series of follow-up posts, Twitter Musk claimed the company tested the system with 8 million concurrent listeners on Monday. I call cap on that. Around the time the interview began, Twitter said that 915,000 people listening to the space and when i left there was 1.6 million so i'll give him that number uh they said basically to proceed at 8 30 ended up starting at 8 40 that's neither here or there now let's go to the accountability because if there's one thing that these mother lovers aren't able oh my goodness did i close it if there's one thing that these dudes aren't able to do is hold each other accountable and when is this from this was updated today but it was originally posted on the 7th on the 7th of August last year, Trump previously mocked DeSantis over a glitchy presidential campaign launch. When Florida Governor Ron DeSantis launched his primary campaign with an interview on Twitter that was marred by techn- technological glitches, Trump mocked his former rival and Musk platform. Wow, DeSantimony DeSantis. The Sanctus. <laughs> He's such a petty bitch. <laughs> Why are you calling him the Sanctus? The Sanctus Twitter launch is a disaster, he wrote. This is from May. Okay, so even a year and uh, even further back, a year and some months, 2023, on his Truth Social Network. His whole campaign will be a disaster watch. I mean, he ain't lying. The, the man's telling the truth. That man did not tell the lie. The people. That man is telling the truth. DeSantis dropped out of the race after a disappointing finish in Iowa kicked off caucus. I can only hope this is the same thing that happens to Trump. I mean... The, he's he's been streaming he's been talking to a lot of younger people i think he talked with logan paul and someone else and once again that's a demographic that i just don't see like it's a demographic ideal for him but it's a demographic that isn't voting right he then talked to aiden ross which aiden ross if you look at his data analytics 
his average viewership, which is terrifying, is average age is 15. There, there's no one there that can vote, right? It's one of the it's one of the weirder things I've ever seen. So now he's talking to Elon Musk crowd, and if you know anything about Elon Musk politics and policies and even in the conversation this is not a political channel he's talking about stuff like libertarian stuff like removing government trump doesn't know anything about that trump doesn't have any ideology with that right trump doesn't have any cognizant dissidents he has no cognitive mindset for removing government infra infrastructure he had he's a he's a very one track pony but you know this is a tech show so we can, we could talk about this and real quickly we'll steamroll through these here are 10 things here are 10 things that if Elon Musk had done from May 2023 till now uh his Twitter launch probably would have been a lot better first and foremost not change the name of of Twitter let's just start there Why'd you change the name? We're talking about over a decade worth of name recognition and you changed it to the title of a porn studio? Do you know how confusing it is for me whenever I start typing into the web browser X and it shows me the hub? XX videos? I was a loyal customer to that platform. I had to upgrade. They didn't have a great premium plan. Now I'm reminded of my tragic mistakes from back in the past? Diabolical. What a waste. Y'all laughing, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. Also, you know, he didn't really buy it. He was forced to buy it. He had to acquire this because of a court dealing that he lost through through no fault of anyone else's, his own. And then probably the number one reason why this shit didn't start working, immediately when he took over this, he fired everybody. He fired everybody. I, ironically, if you send out a support ticket that is covered under, let's say, account recovery, and it doesn't start with the title I was banned somewhere else, you're going to get sent a poop emoji pretty much. The financing, the finance department was fired, so people couldn't get paid. HR department was fired, so new people couldn't get hired. And then you're probably wondering, who's all left there? Well, strictly people who can't leave here because their ability to stay in America is directly tied to their employment, which means they're a bunch of visa individuals, which no beef, no problem. But if you're looking at it from a cognitive sense, it's amazing how everyone else was able to leave or go out and get another job. And there's one story about a dude who was basically in charge of the accessibility Handling all accessibility on Twitter. He fired him and didn't pay him. And ironically, when he said, oh, I can't, basically, the reason why I have to work from home is because I have this crippling disorder and it's hard for me to maneuver around. And it wasn't until that story broke that he decided to pay him. But then, but then people who also needed accessibility and had accessibility issues couldn't use Twitter anymore. But guess what? Immediately after firing those people, they then sued him for not paying them their restitution, their severance packages, their contract agreements. Maybe, maybe, maybe you shouldn't have fired everyone in one shot. And I'm saying this now. Every lesson that Elon Musk is learning right now is something that someone has already learned. Lacking staff, Twitter began to fail, so they don't have the numbers. He cut their staff down to one third of his initial volume. So before there was, let's say there was a hundred people there. He cut it down to one third, one third. That's like a bunch of 33s, 33 point something. You it, it like, yeah, you cut, you cut efficiency down, but what's, what's ultimately going to help you here? Not losing your staff. Another thing that failed this company is the whole verified status and badge shaming. It's like if you if I see you have a badge on your thing and you paid for it, I'm just going to assume that you're I'm just going to assume that you're like also into crypto 
you probably use a vape you probably use a vape on public transportation and you expect you expect the girl that you met on tinder to put out just because you took her to mcdonald's like i'm just gonna assume all those things are also true about you unless you had your badge prior to and you didn't pay for it like lebron said he wasn't gonna pay for it so i guess i guess there are some good people but if you paid for it knowing you you just for click rate you're a bum uh Damage Twitter's uh, research reach by removing free API access. This is another one. A lot of people get their information from Twitch and I mean Twitter. And when I say you're getting your information, don't I don't want you to think like your news. But like when we when we heard about the false alarm on the Hawaiian because they they thought they got a nuclear like a missile warning in Hawaii. A lot of people started panicking because the actual government said that a missile's coming. So when people started tweeting about what was going on, the government could come out and say that this is a malfunction on their official site. So on their Twitter site, they took that away. People who use weather apps to do that. And this is all started because people were following and tracking his jet. You know, to, he wants to be Mr. Environmental, but, you know, he's flying everywhere and he didn't like that. Number eight. These aren't even really reasons why the thing's going on. I'm just making fun of them now at this point. Slash company value by $30 billion. That's a, that's a, can you imagine losing $30 billion? My goodness. And it's big part is because advertisers don't feel comfortable. We did a story about that last week. I'll snap. This video basically goes down how he basically told them to go fuck themselves. And now he's saying, I'm going to sue you if you don't come back to me. Does he think people have Stockholm Syndrome? I think he thinks the world has Stockholm Syndrome. No one misses him. Uh, threatened to sue Microsoft for hiring staff he fired. That's hilarious. So people went out and found other jobs after you fired them and then you want to sue for them. And it's crazy. I guess they couldn't have been that bad. Uh, he threw away an established brand. That was, yeah, that's number one right there. There's a bonus one. Let's see what number eleven is. It's so in it, the thing. That's the crazy thing about it. If you look at his situation from Void, the the first story of someone buying Twitter should have been the story of the year. Wow, someone bought Elon Musk bought Twitter. That was a headline on its own. Everything else he's done is just a banger after banger after a banger, and it's not doing him any justice. Is not doing him any justice. Here goes a short list. In 2018, he paid 20 million dollars. <laughs> in 2018, he t uh, he tried to institute himself into the rescue of a boy. <laughs> Remember when he tried to save those boys from the cave, and then the person who was like, "Man, a a fucking four foot long straight non malleable tube is gonna help us," and he called the guy a pedo, <laughs> and he sued, and the guy sued him and won. Uh, publicly shared COVID misinformation. Nice. 2022, he lifted a ban against sharing COVID misinformation. Cool. Uh, 2022, contracted. <laughs> In 2022, he contracted COVID. Epic. Uh, 2023 of May, earned a spot in the Museum of Failures in New York. I've been to that museum. Great museum. Uh, 2023 tweeted he was up for a cage fight against Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, despite a flurry of online jabs, it never happened. He started talking about this again. So, yeah, he wanted to fight Mark Zuckerberg. And for all you guys that don't know, Mark Zuckerberg actually probably practices jujitsu. I'm not saying that he's good, but he could definitely fuck up a normal person. And he could definitely fuck up an uh, Elon Musk type person. For sure. And then finally, 2023, definitely a grown adult must challenge Zuckerberg to a penis measuring contest. Yeah, I've also remember that. Yeah, I, I've seen Mark Zuckerberg roll on a mat as a wrestler. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. So I say all this to say, look, guys, it's no secret that I don't like this guy. But it goes, it doesn't, it doesn't, it strikes me as odd that he's not even good at managing people to, because if, if there's anything that a, a rich person should be able to do is to get people to do shit for you and the fact that he's not able to get people to do things like make his company work for him speaks volumes about his 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 own impotence and his own in, in lack of like desire because what is 
What is Twitter for if not to be useful to you? And how embarrassing is it to be hosting a former president and trying to get your campaign off the ground and it's delayed by 45 minutes because of your inadequacies in your job? And this is a constant reminder to you and everyone else. I'm not saying you got to be a fuck up like Elon, but Elon has been fucking up and going up the up the stairs. He's been fucking his way up to the top somehow, some way. So does that relegate you to failure because you can't make it land your job or whatever? No, you have to continue to persevere. You have to understand that there are people who are in their positions, either born with a spoon in their mouth or born with a spoon up their ass in one rare off situation. No matter what, the spoon is still valuable. So no matter where that shit was placed at birth, you still can fuck your way up or you can still find a way to make it on your own merit. Either way it goes. The incompetence that this person is showing has to come to end. And we have to find a way of relegating this person to the pack of the classroom. We have to stop like putting this person on a pedestal. His opinions and his and his his hard stance on things don't really matter as much as we should make them matter. But I mean, that's either here or there. I'm eager to know what you guys think about this. Clap it. Yeah. 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 Like. Like, share, subscribe. You guys know the thing. Did y'all know that on YouTube I'm a partner now? So you can go subscribe there. I'm not saying. But they do give a better split. And for the same price you're playing for a sub on Twitch, I'm just saying, you could go over there. You could go over there. No, I'm, hey, hit me up. Let me know what you guys think. All right, let's get it.